Okay, let's look at this next passage, part of the passage here. Again, he's trying to show that his side is smart and the other side is stupid. And here's he's, descri- he's describing the other side. He says of the other side that they're unaccustomed to, to behaving in any mo- mode except the practical one in which feelings are aroused and emotional involvement is- ensues. He's not saying that they find something that intrigues them, that they connect to, that means something to them. He says feelings are aroused, which makes them sound like laboratory experiments. And then emotional involvement in- ensues, which just makes them sound like even more like laboratory experiments. Most people are unsure how to respond to a work. Again, he's making those people unsure how to respond to work. In other words, they're too dumb to know how to respond to a work. That does not invite sentimental intervention. When he's describing their emotional response as sentimental, it's a very, he's basically saying the opposite of an intellectual, aesthetic, philosophical motivation. He's saying that in the same category as being involved in, in romance novels and gossip, that's the, the way he's classifying their emotions. Sentimentality is considered essentially the lowest level of emotion, the least sophisticated, the least intellectual. And he's classifying their response to the kind of art they like as that. This whole passage is basically about belittling the other side. The other side has told him his entire life, that's not art. Art has to look like something when he describes when he likes abstract art. So now he's trying to turn the tables and say that the people who can't get abstract art are just low-level, sentimental, hick idiots. And he does that by, by using relatively subtle techniques, but fairly brutal word choice and methods if you understand how this kind of persuasion works.